We're live, we're active, let's get it, man. Like I said, it was your first time here. Hit the subscribe button, it's your second time here. Hit the like button, it's your third time here. Drop that joint. And today, we're back with another Mr. Ballin', boy. And today, we're gonna finish off part three to part, I guess, one of one video. The most insane man on TV. If you ain't seen the last one, go check it out. It's crazy. I can't believe he got away with everything he did on live TV. It's illegal. Just let you know. What he did was legal. You know what I mean? Go check that joint out. But yeah, other than that, we is on number one, the gap. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't really got anything to say there? Oh yeah, other than that, you know what I mean? I don't know if y'all can see, but look. I just looked that. I put this little thing around my mic. Let me know if like it sound better. If it don't, I'm just gonna take it back off. But it's my first recording with it on. So yeah, hope y'all having a great day. And yeah, let's get straight into this joint. It's gonna be quick and short today because I gotta do something. What we got? Damn, I'm having a hard time add that. That's 20 minutes right here. Woo. I can't do too much talking. In 2010, 18 year old Renee Marsden was living in Sydney, Australia with her parents and her three siblings. Renee was a very outgoing person who had a big circle of friends and she was also very close with her family, especially her mom, Teresa. Teresa had given birth to Renee when she was only 19 years old. And so now that Renee was a young woman, because of their closeness and ages, the two had become very close friends instead of mother and daughter. And so because of that dynamic, Renee found herself always going to her mother to tell her anything going on in her life. She was her confidant. And that year, something major had disrupted Renee's life, and so naturally she went to her mom and she told her about it. It would turn out, Renee's boyfriend of nearly two years, who she was madly in love with, well, she discovered he was cheating on her and didn't actually even A hey, Young! I don't know- <clears throat> God dang, A hey, Young! I don't know what's up with y'all. If you're gonna be in a relationship, do not cheat, bro. It's not worth it. If you're gonna be in a relationship, break up with him or her, bro. You do all this cheating for what? Look at, I don't. I never understood people that cheat, bro. It, it's for what? It's the same thing, bro. If you can't make it work with her, you ain't gonna make it work with another jit. I mean, that's for a whole other video. If y'all wanna hear about that, cause like I found, I've found out a lot of stuff since I've been in a relationship. Relationship on the just the fundamentals of. What our actual relationship is versus what we want it to be. Yeah, you know I mean, if that makes sense. Care about her. He had sent these text messages that basically said as much. And so she confronted her boyfriend with these text messages and he denied ever sending them. He said, Look, I've never cheated on you. I don't know where those came from. I promise I've been faithful to you this entire time. But Renee just wasn't buying it. And so she had felt forced to break up with him. And so Renee naturally had turned to her mother for comfort and guidance. But Teresa, all she could really offer her daughter was, you know, to remind her that time heals all wounds and Dang. That certainly Thanks. someday Thanks. you will meet the right person for you. And yeah, amazingly, so good as only a couple of weeks after this very painful breakup, Renee came home from work one day and she walked into the house and she was all smiles. And considering how unbelievably depressed she had been over the last couple of weeks, I mean, this really stood out. And so when her mom saw her smiling and she often radiating drugs. happiness, she rushed over to her and said, you know, what's gotten into you? Why are you in such a good mood? And Renee would or tell she her that, actually, I've met another guy. I knew it! So Teresa said, who? Who did you meet? Who is this person? Bro, if you're gonna be in a long relationship, especially two years, most people are like, that's ah, not that long. Bro, it's, it, two years is a long, a lot of time that you didn't get to just worry about yourself. So don't be jumping straight into another relationship. That's my advice. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be jumping straight into another relationship. It's not worth it. Take that time to worry about yourself. Figure yourself out. Figure out what you want. Just live your life if you never got to because you were in that relationship worry about somebody else. But yeah, bro, take, take your time. Take your time. Don't just be jumping straight into another relationship after well, a few weeks. Or it was a couple of days, something like that. And she would tell her mom that his name is Braden Spiteri. He was 23 years old and he was a graduate of the King's School, which is a really prestigious boys school in Sydney. And his father was this really successful business person who owned this big construction company that he was set to inherit later on. And so she was just raving about how amazing this guy was. And Teresa was really happy. If nothing else, this was a very good distraction for her. And so she asked her daughter at some point, you know, how'd you meet this guy? And Renee would tell her that Camilla had introduced them. 
Camilla Zidane was Renee's best friend they had met in high school. And Renee would explain to her mother that Brayden was actually Camilla's ex-boyfriend, but they hadn't dated in a really long time and there was no feelings between them. They were just friends at this point. Nah, and apparently, son. you know, after Renee had this really big- Nah, son, that's weird. I ain't, I don't know how this is gonna tie in, but that that's just weird, recommending your ex to your best friend. I don't know how this is gonna tell you, but that's weird. That's that's really weird. Painful breakup. Camilla had just felt bad for her, and so she had gone out and found the best possible match for Renee, which in her mind was this guy Brayden. Teresa knew Camilla really well because she was always over the house, and she knew Teresa's intentions must have been good, but she's thinking to herself, this is bad news. You don't want to have best friends, one dating the ex-boyfriend of the other. It's Thanks. just bad news waiting to happen. And so Teresa couldn't even help herself, and she says to her daughter, do you really think it's a good idea to be dating Camilla's ex-boyfriend? But Renee would tell her mom, look, Camilla was totally upfront with me. She just wants me to be happy. She thinks Brayden is a good match for me. They don't have feelings anymore. Bro, Not people always say that until you see them kissing up on each other, being happy, then you get mad because that could have been you. <laughs> Watch. Not at all. She's totally in support. And so Teresa still very much had her doubts that this was a good idea. But she put those doubts aside and instead she said, no, okay, well, can those you show doubts me are correct, of son. I see what he looks like. And so Renee pulls out her phone and she finds a picture of Brayden and she shows it to her mom. And right away, her mom is looking at this picture and seeing that Brayden is a very handsome guy, big, bright smile. But she sees in this picture, Camilla is very clearly laying on his shoulder like she is his girlfriend. And so again, Teresa's thinking to herself, this is not good. Someone is going to get hurt. But over the next couple of weeks and months, Renee and Brayden texted each other all the time. I mean, Renee had her phone out basically 24 seven talking to Brayden. The pair had made plans to meet up and see each other in person for the first time on Gotta several different quick. occasions. But every single time they were set to go meet, one of them would have a conflict that would make it impossible to have this face-to-face -face meeting. And so before long, when they just could not get a meeting established, they kind of stopped trying to have face-to-face -face meetings. It was almost like they had built this really strong, flourishing relationship all via their phones. And it just was getting more and more awkward to actually go out and see each other in real life. It was just more comfortable doing it all on their phones. And so this digital only relationship between Renee and Brayden continued for almost a year until January of 2012 when something horrible happened. Brayden was in a horrible motorcycle accident. He survived the accident, but his passenger, his best friend, this guy named Richie, who was riding right on the back of his motorcycle, he didn't survive. He was killed in the accident. And it was determined that Brayden was driving recklessly. And so he was charged with manslaughter and convicted and sentenced to two years in prison. Even though Renee's mother, Teresa, was totally upset about this accident. I mean, she did understand that someone had lost their life and now Brayden was going to jail for two years. She understood the seriousness of this accident. But at the same time, there was a part of her, her motherly protective side of her, that was kind of relieved for her daughter. She figured with Brayden being out of contact for two years in prison, that their relationship would end and Renee nope, she better be texting that young boy. Else who was not an ex-boyfriend of a close friend and was someone that she could actually see in person and not just have to text with all the time. But surprisingly, after Brayden was transferred to Goldberg they talk prison, even more. He was serving his two year sentence, it's located about two hours to the south of Sydney. What his happened family though? smuggled a phone somehow into this jail and he was able to continue texting with Renee and so after he was incarcerated they just picked up their relationship like nothing had changed now Renee's family did not like this development and they told her as much they thought this was a bad idea that this was the wrong path for her but Renee didn't care she was totally in love and in fact over man, the first couple of weeks hey. that he was in y'all being protected but y'all sound like some haters man as parents y'all sound like some haters like nah but I can understand they don't want they want the best for a child like bro come on you can have anybody you had a man that's in jail that's close to your best friend so it does make sense I'm like yeah. I would be something like bro what are you doing you're gonna date you're y'all gonna beef and not be best friends no that's what's gonna happen but I want to see what happens what happened for us? Like something crazy that happened. We got 12 more minutes. 12 more minutes.
Goldburn Prison, their relationship only intensified. They actually agreed to get married as soon as he was oh, released the in the end of 2013. And in fact, Renee had already begun making wedding preparations. She had gone on eBay and found this beautiful tiara she would wear on her wedding day, and she had contracted a wedding photographer, and she had even contacted the Greek consulate to ask if it would be okay if Brayden were allowed to enter their country because they were planning to have their honeymoon in Greece and Brayden was going to be a convicted felon and so she needed permission for him. But in August of 2013, just two months before Brayden's expected release date, something changed. When he his mother, something? Teresa, got a text message from Brayden, something she had never gotten before, and it said, you need to check on your daughter. She's talking about killing herself. And so Teresa is totally taken aback by this message. And she goes right into Renee's bedroom where she is sitting on her bed. And her mother sits down next to her and says, honey, are you okay? You know, what's going on? And Renee would look up at her mom and say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm fine. What's going on with you? And then Teresa would hold out the phone and show her the text message from Brayden. And as soon as Renee saw it, she kind of sighed and looked at her mom and said, I'm not going to hurt myself. We just broke up. Up. Our relationship is over. Teresa knew this was going to be an extremely hard stretch of time for her daughter with another painful breakup here. But at the same time, Teresa thought to herself, this is probably for the best. That relationship just had bad news written all over it from the start. And so now she can begin to heal and move forward with her life. And so Teresa and Renee would sit in the room for a while, just chatting on the bed. And then eventually Renee would tell her mom that her plans that night were to go out with her friends and cut loose and kind of just forget about this whole thing. And so Teresa sat in her bedroom on her bed as her daughter stood in front of the mirror and got ready. And then once Renee was ready, she and her mom hugged. Bro, she about to go out there and get drunk and get lit, bro. Oh, that's not what you let somebody do after you get in a breakup, bro. That's how something bad happened when they do something stupid, bro. Let them chill in the house. Let them get a feel. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I wouldn't have did it. I would be like, where are you going by yourself? I probably wouldn't even let you go. I'm like, bro, you're not doing it. Sit in the crib. You're wilding. You're out there. You're this dumb stuff. You're going to get hurt. Somebody going to get hurt. You going to get in trouble? <sighs> mm. Bye for me. Bye for me. I'm talking about it. I'm fine for me. Fine for me. Kissed, and then Renee told her mom she'd be back soon and then she left the house. A few hours later, Teresa received a text message from her daughter and it started with, Mom, I love you so much and I'm sorry for... That is not the text I think. That's why you don't let your freaking child leave after they said that. You just got a text talking about you get your daughter. She about to offer. So daughter says, I ain't really about to do it. He just broke up with me. You gonna let her leave that night? I know she did not get the text I think she get, bro the pain I'm about to cause you. You can still talk to me though, just call out my name and I'll be there. Teresa read this message and didn't really know what to make of it. She knew her daughter- Just call out my name and I'll be there? That means I'm about to off myself. What do you mean you don't know what that means? She was almost certainly very upset about this breakup, but she didn't really understand the context of this message. And so she called her daughter. She didn't pick up, so she called her again. And after that second time her daughter didn't answer, she sent her a text message that just said, please call me back but she sat there kind of waiting for her daughter's call, but it never came. And so Teresa, starting to feel a little bit worried about her daughter, she called Camilla and she asked her, you know, hey, have you talked to Renee tonight? Because I can't get in touch with her. And Camilla would tell Teresa that actually, yeah, I just got a very strange text message from her that just said, I love you, I'm sorry. And so at this point, the two women understood that there could be something very wrong with Renee. And so they met up and drove all around Sydney, going to all the places that Renee was known to go to. But after several hours of looking and not hearing back from Renee, they really didn't know what to do. And so the two women drove back to Teresa's house, so Renee's house, and they went inside and they sat down. And at that point, Teresa's husband and the rest of Renee's- Bro, I don't know what year he said this was in, but bro. If this is 2020, if this is an iPhone century and you do not have your child's location, you are, bro, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. You could do everything right as a parent. That right there just made you a horrible fucking parent. I don't fucking care, bro. I give zero fucks about that. If you do not care about where your child is when they leave that house, you don't care about your child. Safety is big on, big on me. I care. If you are a loved one, and I get you, I'm having your location, bro. Forget that, I am not letting no, none of my loved ones leave the crib and I'm able to have the location, not have the location because when something happens like this or you try to hit me with a text like this, eh, ain't happening, I'm only here, boy.
And if I randomly saw a oh, location, I would have caught. Bro, I'm on your noggin. I'm on your noggin for real. And if I saw that text, I already knew what that text talking about. Talking about you can always call out, be there. I know what that means. I know what that means. They were all there, and everyone's just kind of sitting around wondering what to do next when around 9, 9.30 at night, they heard a knock on the door. That's 12! It was the police coming to inform them that they had found Renee's car parked in an area that it shouldn't have been, but Renee wasn't there. And so they were coming to ask if they knew where she was and why her car might be out there. And so at this point, the family is totally terrified. They tell the police about these strange text messages. And then before long, the parents just rush outside, they hop in their cars, and they drive out to where their daughter's car is. And where Renee's car was parked was in an area called The Gap. It basically was this sheer cliff overlooking the ocean. The parents got out and they searched their daughter's car, but there was no sign of where she had gone based on the car. And so they began running up and down the cliffs. There was a sidewalk that kind of ran parallel to the edge of the cliff. And they're running up and down, hoping they're gonna find their daughter, but there's no sign of her. And then at some point, Teresa climbed up to one of the highest points of the cliff. And when she got up there, she found her daughter's black flat shoes. And they were placed neatly together on the ground right in front of the fence that was there to prevent people from getting too close to the edge of the cliff. But despite an extensive search that night, they couldn't find any sign of Renee. She was nowhere to be found. However, the police would discover the following day that there was actually a camera that was looking at that section of the cliffs. And so they reviewed this footage and they found Renee. They saw what happened to her. And in this camera footage, you see Renee walking up the trail in the middle of the night and she stops and she Sneaky takes off man with that that ad i didn't see a man i think this was blocking me you lucky and she puts them down and then she hops over that fence now the fence was not right up against the very edge of the cliff it was set back maybe three or four feet and so she hops over the fence and then she steps very carefully to the edge of the cliff and she kind of peeks over the edge and then looks visibly terrified and she moves backwards a few steps until her back is pressed up against the fence and then she pulls out her phone and she sends three text messages. One was to her mother, which is the text about how she loved her and she was sorry for the pain she was going to cause her. And then the other two text messages were to Camilla and also to Brayden. However, to this day, we don't actually know what either of those text messages said. And then after sending these three text messages, Renee takes her phone and she throws it off the cliff into the water. And then she sat down and began kind of shimmying herself forward towards the edge. Now, the camera did not actually pick her up falling off the cliff, but it's assumed when she went out of frame that she had fallen off the cliff to her death. Her body would never be recovered. Renee's death was ruled a suicide. However, her family, in addition to being totally devastated by this horrible loss, they felt totally confused. They had no idea why this had happened, but they were certain it had to have something to do with this recent breakup with Brayden Spiteri. And so they tried to get in touch with Brayden, but he wasn't getting back in touch with them. And so the family contacted the police and said, can you reach out to the prison where he is and set up a meeting? And so the police obliged them and they called Goldburn Prison. And when they spoke to the prison, they said, who? Brayden who? Yeah, we don't have a Brayden Spiteri here. We never have. And the reason was, Braden Spiteri wasn't real. Renee's friend, Camilla, had made him up. He was a fictitious person. That picture of Braden Spiteri where Camilla is laying on his shoulder, that was just some random person she had met in a club. Camilla had always been very possessive of Renee ever since they had met in high school. And at some point, she had just decided that she wanted even more control over Renee. And so the first thing she did is she convinced Renee that her earlier boyfriend, the one she'd been dating for two years before Braden, she convinced Renee that he had been cheating on her the whole time, he was unfaithful, that he didn't love her, and then she had created those text messages and given them to Renee and convinced Renee that that was something he had said, and before long, Renee totally believed it. She approached her boyfriend, he denied it, but Camilla the whole time is telling Renee, he's lying to you, he's been doing this this whole time, I know he's a bad guy, and so Renee had listened to her best friend and she had severed that relationship. And then almost immediately after that, Camilla swoops into the rescue and connects Renee with this 
Braden guy, Camilla's supposed ex-boyfriend, who really was just Camilla on the other side of the phone. And for nearly two years, Camilla kept this charade up, and Renee completely believed this was a real person, that Braden was her boyfriend. She loved him. And eventually, in June of 2013, so two months before Renee died, she confided in Braden, aka Camilla, that her friend Camilla was toxic and mean and controlling and she didn't want to be her friend anymore. And so Camilla, she's reading this and she's furious. And so she decides the only way to get revenge on Renee and regain control of her is to have Brayden break up with her. And so two months later on August 5th, 2013, so on the day that Renee died, she was out to lunch at around 1 p.m. with a coworker when she gets a text message from Brayden that just kind of comes out of the blue and it says, I need a break from you. Now this is around the time that they're planning their wedding. And so Renee is totally heartbroken and she's trying to get in touch with him and call him. He's not picking up. And then fast forward to about 2.45 p.m. that afternoon, we know Renee called Goldburn Prison. It was the first time she had done that. Now, we don't know who she spoke to or what they actually talked about, but it's nearly guaranteed that she learned Braden Spiteri was not being held there. And so almost certainly she would have realized that Braden is either not real or Braden had been lying to her in such a huge way that the relationship could never work. And so no matter what, this chapter of her life was totally over. And so later that day when she was sitting on her bed in her bedroom and her mom came in and she asked her how she was doing, it's very likely that Renee was dead devastated. She was crushed and probably kind of embarrassed about how badly she had just been duped by this Braden person, whoever that was. And so even though normally Renee would tell her mother everything, her mother was her confidant. She loved her mother. It was like she just couldn't bring herself to discuss what was happening to her. It was just so enormous. It was so overwhelming that she hid it from her mother. And instead, she just got dressed up, said goodbye to her mom, and then she headed out to the cliffs. No charges were ever brought against Camilla because catfishing, which is exactly what she was doing, which is using a fictitious online persona to lure people into relationships, well, that's not considered a crime in Australia. And Camilla, despite being pressed by the police and Renee's family, has never taken responsibility for this and has never apologized. Yo, so she's trying to... I don't know what the fuck is happening on my computer, bro. Oh, it's a lot. I was so confused. I thought my joint just like crashed or something. Bro, are you telling me you're not gonna, you're not, you're not trying to take blame for any of this? Like you didn't have any cause to do this. You played with somebody's emotion. I just got out of a two year relationship because you lied to them, trying to say that 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 her man was cheating when he really wasn't. And you set everything up to have more control of her, just for you to blame. I want more control of her. This girl got a wedding ring on her finger already. Why is she even messing with somebody? Bro, why can't you live your freaking life? This is blown. How do you not have a law? How do you not have some type of law? Y'all need to make laws over there in Australia to put somebody away from messing with somebody. Bro, you really have somebody believe that they got catfished and they were already depressed mad bad. And she's not catching no charges. She's not trying to take any blame for it or nothing. People like that, yo. Somebody need get her. Somebody need smack her. Somebody need smack her. Cause that's why. That is why. No, bro. You got off scot free for playing with somebody that ended up offing himself. I have never heard that, bro. That's ridiculous. But yeah, man. Yeah, man. Y'all, y'all see us in the video. I do got one thing to say though. One of my last comments you said. Somebody said. I got my Instagram, my Snapchat posted on my intro, but I don't got it in the uh, description. I am going to put it in the description for this video. Um, I'm not active on my Instagram or Snapchat like that, so I'm probably going to redown. I don't have I don't have Instagram download. I got to redownload. I, I recently deleted it. I redownloaded it, though. Uh, if y'all going to be more active over there. Uh, but, yeah, other than that. That's the end of the video. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't enjoy the video, hit the like button and tell me why. Other than that, drop that joint.
and we out, y'all. Deuces.